Good morning and welcome, chat, to Breakfast Analysis Live, where we will be breaking down a variety of different topics. And today, we're talking about the one operator that I talk about on my stream more than any other. If you've been viewing the stream for a while, you know the operator that I cannot stand when pro teams use is none other than Osa. Every time I see an Osa get played, I feel like it's not getting good value out of the utility, it's losing the round, it's struggling to have any impact, and yet, pro teams continue to play this operator non-stop like it's the best op in the game. Maybe I'm exaggerating a little bit, but we do see a lot of Osa get played, and I have found that it's not a very successful operator. So today, I wanted to run a analysis stream on Osa, because I'm not perfect. Maybe Osa is really good. I haven't looked at the numbers, I haven't done a deep dive until now. So I've gone through, I've done the OSA deep dive, and I'm here to present to you my findings. Now, I approached this by making five questions that I wanted to answer to start off about OSA. Question one, is OSA actually bad? Because although I watch a lot of games and I tend not to see very, very many successful OSA pushes, I can be biased. Maybe I'm just not watching the right regions. Maybe I'm not watching the right players. So question one, very simple, we're going to do our best to answer, is Osa actually bad? Question two, which bomb sites, if any, is Osa viable on? Osa is extremely bomb site specific, she's not a generalist operator that can be brought all the time. So I'm going to be using data and statistics to try to figure out which operators Osa is best on and which operators Osa is sorely overused. Question three. What are the primary things that counter OSA? And obviously, there are some, you know, C4s, impacts. I'm sure we can name a few to come up with. But by watching a lot of different OSA rounds, I'm hopeful that we can get a real comprehensive list and understand not just utility-wise, but what type of play styles make OSA fail the most. Question four, a, ph a philosophical question, if you will. How should we buff OSA? If we were Ubisoft, if I could give my recommendations to Tom Clancy himself, how would we change this operator? And question number five, who is the best OSA player in the world? So that's what we're going to be diving into today. Uh, we're talking all about OSA. All of these questions will be answered by the end of the stream. So I hope that you enjoy. Now, if you know anything about me, you know I hate OSA. If you know a second thing about me, you know that I love statistics. I love my numbers. I love my maps. I love my data. I love math. So the number one thing I'm going to do when I go to ask the question, is OSA bad? So I'm going to look at the numbers. So I went in and I compiled all the numbers from the Manchester Major. And as it turns out, of all attacking operators, OSA was played fewer than most, but had only a 39% win rate in the Manchester Major. Well below the average from an attacking operator, which sits around 43%. Sample sizes are important here. I have included that with the data. You know, we got Kali all the way at the bottom there, who only got played no, this is five food. times. This is beans. Someone put beans inside the computer. Five times, 100% win rate. That doesn't mean Kali's the best operator in the game. Likewise, Blackbeard was brought five times, but only won once. So a 20% win rate. These win rates can't be taken as pure fact, but I do think they paint a pretty good picture. I mean, down here at the bottom, you see Monty at the very high end of things. You see operators like Sledge, who's very outclassed, Fuse, Glass, more gimmicky operators towards the top. So, okay, maybe it's not 100% saying that Osa is the worst op in the game. There's plenty of useful operators even ranked higher than Osa, like Jackal and Brava, but it is an indication that she's bad. Maybe you're sitting here thinking, Jesse, I'm not a fucking comp player, right? I can still play Osa in my ranked games just because pro players are good at countering Osa. In my ranked games, I love playing Osa and I'm really good with her. But the numbers are even worse for ranked players. Looking at year one, season three, uh, or the most recent, year nine, season one, my bad. Year nine, season one, the most recent pool of data, Osa had the lowest win rate of every single attacking operator in PC. Just an abysmal win rate overall, at about minus 2%. Obviously, the sample size is way larger for ranked, so it's going to be smaller margins, but still Osa ranking dead last in ranked and very low when it comes to competitive allows me to answer our first question. Yeah, Osa is bad. It's not just the fact that I've been watching games where she's playing poorly. It's not just the idea that, yeah, maybe sometimes certain strategies aren't working out. Across the board, Osa's win rate is very poor. So I'm not going crazy. In general, Osa's bad. Osa's stats from year one, season three would be a lot worse. <laughs> 
I heard she didn't win a single round in any format year one season three, uh, but I didn't track that data, so I wouldn't say 100%. Now, we know Osa's not great, but she's also not an operator that is played on every single bomb site. She's an operator you expect to see only on certain sites. And so when I looked through the data of the Manchester Major specifically, I identified five key sites where Osa is brought at least three times. That was my cutoff. It is kind of arbitrary, but... Every other bomb site that Osa was brought, she was only brought once or twice, and when she was brought twice, it was typically by the same team. So I'm looking specifically at bomb sites where Osa was brought by multiple different teams so that we can accurately judge is this uh, a strategy with Osa that's actually good on its own, or is it just that a good team is playing it? So before we jump to the big five, I'll show you the rest of the data. These are all Osa appearances from the Manchester Major outside of the top five bomb sites. And as you can see, most of them are pretty terrible on the win rate. The only bomb sites outside of the ones I'm calling the top five, the big five, uh, that had Osa wins were Bank Open Area, where she was brought once and won once, and Nighthaven Basement. And at the end of this small segment, I want to be able to tell you a list of operators I think Osa is good or viable on. But I want to put an asterisk onto Nighthaven Basement because while I'm not going to include it on my final list, I think it is a map, I think it is a bomb site that has potential for Osa. During the Manchester Major, the only team that ran this bomb site was Beast Coast. They're the best team in the world, at least at that major. And so it makes sense that they're going to be able to find success with the operator. It's hard to really analyze and tell, though, if that's actually a, a bomb site where Osa is more effective than your traditional strategy, or if Beast Coast are just really good at Nighthaven Labs. And I can tell you for a fact, they are really good at Nighthaven Labs. So for that reason, we're not going to be digging a deep dive on Nighthaven Labs basement for Osa. If there's a single bomb site that you expect to see Osa on, and it's not on this list right here or in the next five bomb sites that we look at, that means not a single pro team thought she was worthwhile bringing on those bomb sites, at least at the most recent major. So she's probably not that good. So of the big five, the first one I want to look at is going to be the bomb site that initially led me to believe that Osa is kind of a terrible operator. This is the bomb site I would always watch in competitive. It's, I think, the first bomb site that really Really gained traction with Osa, and I've never liked this push. Of course, I'm talking about Armory Locker's archives on Border. This is the bomb site where Osa got brought, I think, initially the most. Currently, it had, I believe, the third most plays in the Manchester Major for any uh, bomb site where Osa was brought. Uh, and, and it's a classic. We all know what this push is. So, what are the stats for Osa on Armory Locker's and archives? Well, they're pretty bad. Osa was brought six times, but only once did Osa actually successfully attack this bomb site. One win and five losses. So we're gonna bring in the, some clips from these from this bomb site and kind of talk about why things are going well or why they're going poor. I want to show you a very typical push with Osa, just in case you don't know what this style of push typically is but like. When they were succeeding in the LCQ, they were so this is a push from Lagonis when they were playing against SSG. Notice the double claymore to try to stop a jump out from the radio window. You've got an Osa barricade initially being brought to try to get into the bomb site. Lagonis then pulls out a second, uh, a second shield, which you can see him pulling out now, and he uses this second shield to kind of push in. So he eventually gets sandwiched between the two shields. So he's super protective from somebody jumping out at him, and he's got the shield in front of him to stop himself being shot as he goes for this execute. Note that Maya, another player from Team Liquid, is playing out on the window, and then he pushes on in with his shield, and you see it working. This is the angle that you expect the defense to use to stop this push in, but the shield actually saves Lagonus' life, and he's able to get in instead. Faults starts to prep one of the biggest counters of Osa, which we will talk about soon. That's the C4. So this is a generalized setup of Osa. This is how it typically gets set up on this bomb site. This is typically what teams will do. It's a very standard basic Osa push on uh, the top floor of Porter. And we'll come back to some rounds where things uh, don't go so well. And as you can see here, it's getting countered by a C4. I don't know if this one actually... Yeah, okay, it did destroy the shield. So one of the biggest counters to Osa's are explosives. And this is a huge problem on the border top floor bomb site. I want to show you another round between Dark Zero and BDS when Canadian tries to do this same strategy. 
And although it starts really good, look how many explosives BDS bring because they expect this push. Two C4s and four impacts. And when you can deal, especially when you can deal with the player that's on the window, this push is really, really tough to pull off. Watch how BDS stop this OSHA push from Canadian. Canadian tosses in his util. He starts to move forward. He's got NJR on the cover. But the C4 comes out to kill NJR. And then Shiko with an impact comes out, kills Canadian. This is bog standard. This happens all the time with defenders on this bomb site. They'll run the C4s, they'll run the impacts. That was a particularly beautiful way to do it from BDS, where they distracted NJR with the C4, then Shiko came and swung, then they got the kill onto Canadian with the impact from Shiko. But again, this happens in all shapes and forms. It's very, very common, and it counters this push a lot. The other big problem that Osa has on this bomb site is that Border as a map is extremely attacker-sided. So that means the defense are often taking a lot of steps early in the round where uh, they're trying to get a leg up before the attackers can set up. And Osa isn't particularly good at stopping those. In fact, with the shield in her hand, she's really bad at stopping, say, spawn peaks or other aggressive moves from the attackers. And multiple times when I was watching clips of Osa on this bomb site, something like this would happen, where this round would start, and the defense would come out and just make an aggressive move. Sometimes it was a run out like this one. Sometimes it was a little bit later in the round where aggression would come out. But it takes out a key operator. And the thing about this push is if you do not have everything perfectly in place, if you don't got your smokes lined up for the push, if you don't have somebody covering on the window, if you don't have everything going to plan, like control of the bottom floor, the Oza push gets a lot weaker. So in this round, immediately a runner happens, they lose their glass, a critical piece of the round. But it's not just that that can come out from aggression. Remember those claymores that Lagonus was placing back on the window? If those are placed incorrectly, or if they're placed a little bit farther forward, and some of the defense tries to take advantage of that, well, it can also be a huge counter to this classic Osa push. As we see through the rest of this push, by trying to put the claymore under the radio window, Miracle opens himself up to get run out by Fish Guy, and now the complete push has fallen apart. Not only can the Glass not help out with the execute, but even Miracle himself goes down to some aggression before this push goes on. So we see there's a lot of ways to counter this push from the defense, and pro teams are really good at countering this push. But I want to be fair, and I want to show you the one and only time that this bomb site was actually won by the attackers, because I think it was kind of brilliant. Don't keep losing. This is also a push run by Lagonus. It's not the same round I showed you at the start of these clips, but it's a similar idea. Note here, there's a bulletproof in the site, which will see through any smokes that get tossed out and can perfectly uh, tell the rest of the team whether the plant is going down, whether the Osa's shield is still there, whether the Osa is planting, etc, etc. This bulletproof gets pinged out by Liquid, and it's something they've got a real concern about. Obviously, Faults is dead, constantly watching this camera, which was uh, placed by Ashen. So Team Liquid, they, they use a lot of their utility here. Look that they've used all of their Candelas, they've used their Talon Shields as well. The shield is still up, and at this point, Lagonus makes a call. He says they're going to be focused on this doorway for the rest of the round. What if we just completely change our push? And with Lagonis making this call, the entire team rotates around the hallway and starts finding frags on players that aren't expecting a push from this direction. First, it's Iconic inside a break room, completely caught off guard by this, and then Ness continues to push even deeper to kill Ashen right after that. They're not using the Osa shields at all to get a plant down, they saw that their push wasn't going to work because there was still good utility on the defense. They just used those Osa shields as a distraction, and then they went and planted on the complete other side of the bomb site. This is a great call from Lagonis, and they do eventually win this round. Of course, 4v1 post plant. Hard to lose it at that point. Now, it's not just being done because of the IGLing. Obviously, Nesk played a fucking fantastic round there, too. But I think it starts to hint at the biggest strength of Osa, and that is when she's not the key focal point of the round, she can be a good distraction. She's really good at drawing people's attention, and if you don't have to actually rely on the shields to get the plant down, oftentimes you can convert rounds off of that. So that's all the clips I have for Oregon uh, on Armory Locker's archives. A very unsuccessful bomb site, but the first one that I had really um, that caught my attention as an Osa site in particular. The next bomb site is one that we've actually watched a couple times since the Manchester Major.
And that's Clubhouse Basement. Again, please, please ignore the fact that it's an old, old photo. Clubhouse Basement was played four times throughout the Manchester Major. Uh, and it's one that Osa, I think, in theory, makes a lot of sense on. Statistically, it's still really bad. One win and three losses was all that could be mustered for clubhouse basement for Osa attacking play, uh, teams on this bomb site. And there were a couple of key teams that really liked this push and a lot of teams that just didn't want to run this at all. I'm going to show you what I think is the best example of a classic Osa push where everything goes almost right. At least it goes right until the end. And it, the best example of an Osa push on this bomb site I could find was from Team Cruelty, which... Kind of tells you all you need to know about this push, but let's watch it. Yo. The mirror window has so it's going to be a kitchen draw. Matumbo uses his nades to spam out back armory and force any players back. He drops with the shield so that he can't get shot as he drops. There are some toxic babes, but he can back off out of those and start his plants. More toxic babes come out, and then he's got to rotate even farther back, but he can take the shield with him, and he's still in a strong position. I want to note at this point, too, oftentimes you'll see the ash wall get opened up and Osa players walk down the main stairs to get to this exact same position Matumbo's in, whether you drop the hatch or come in here the push at this point is pretty much the same so Matumbo gets in position to try to plant and notice all the things that start to go wrong ashen way up here is starting to run past and you know what uh, we got to shit on ivan a little bit here horrible cover as ivan just lets ashen sprint on past and kill Matumbo mid plant but this push is not over just because osa died her shield is still in place so somebody on Cruelty is able to take Lemons and try to turn it into Lemonade. Ivan eventually does his job, kills Ashen on the cover. At this point, Pyrox starts to run down the main stairs and tries to retake the position to plant behind the Osa shield. He'll move down this way, and it's a man advantage. Cruelty should have the lead in this round. Ivan's still covering from above. They're going to get back on the Diffuse kit. Here, Rovi's going to open it up. Sorry, not Pyrox. And he just has to make it past this doorway, which he does. He's in position. Osa is all the way back to plan. But there's still a C4 that can come out. And in this case, the C4 didn't actually get the kill. He tossed the C4, which forced Rovi to get off. And then that allowed Forrest to get the kill from Dirt Tunnel. But it's another thing that goes wrong in this push. And at that point, it's too far gone. Jane, I know, is kind of nasty with it. And they do close out the 2v1 as well. Notice now, of course, the C4. The shield is gone. He can't plant. It's over. Oops. So... It still doesn't work, the push, but I think that kind of shows you what the plan was for this execute, right? You drop the hatch, you use your nades to clear out back armory. They just had bad cover. I think the biggest problem with this push in general is there's so many failure points. I think if you play it perfectly, as Team Cruelty did not, the push makes a lot of sense, and in theory it works, but you've got to worry about the C4 coming from back armory. You've got to worry about toxic babes. You've got to worry about somebody just sprinting past your kitchen cover and shooting your planter in the side. You've got to worry about somebody coming back up through Ashwall themselves and stopping on the defense. And to show you it's not just Team Cruelty being Team Cruelty, the worst team at the Major, I'm going to show you another example of a pro team skipping one of these steps when they go for the exact same execute. Around. This time, it's Mentalist. It comes right at the start here. It's again going to be a kitchen drop, but Mentalist here is forgetting to use his nades. He's not spamming back armory with these frag grenades like we saw Matumbo do. So when he drops with the shield in front of his face, the shield leans out of the way and he just gets killed by the warden who's able to avoid the flashes. A great play from good boy. Again, it's just one of the steps that gets skipped. Uh, another problem with this push. Again, it is a mistake on the attacking side of the team, but it's another mistake that goes hard punished. They lose this round. I don't want to show you the end of it. I think it drags on for a while, but they don't successfully win this. Just like on Border, I wanted to show you the one and only time Anosa push actually won, and it was actually later in this game. It was also by Bleed Esports, and you'll notice they adapt their push a little bit here. In reality, they decide that this kitchen drop is just not going to work for them, and they choose to drop the moto hatch instead. I don't think this is a bad push by any means. Um, 
It's just not really focused on the Osa. The Osa doesn't have a huge amount of impact here overall. The blue push, despite being down at the start, is going to go really well. Reaps gets a kill. Mentalist does frag as well, but through no help of the Osa. Then he does bring up the shield eventually here for Mentalist, and maybe it helps him get a little bit of intel. But I think ultimately, even... Hello? Oh, this is a stream issue, unfortunately. This is not my end. Yeah, the VOD just stuttered here live, so there's nothing I can do. You see, he, he avoids dying there with the shield, but even if he had died, his teammates find all the kills. Aspie gets this one, Turd gets that one, he plants 1v4. Ultimately, it is a round win for Osa, but it's not particularly because of the Osa shield. Again, this is just how the VOD is, there's nothing I can do with the quality issues here. So next, we're going to move on to the third bomb site of the big three. I think that that bomb site, in theory, makes sense, but there's a lot of mistakes, and no pro team really did it that successfully. The next is a bomb site that is not super popular and we'll probably never see again after the summer because it is on the map that is being taken out of the pool. I'm, of course, talking about like a coil. meeting and kitchen on Oregon. And this is going to be the first bomb site that we look at where uh, we actually find multiple wins for Osa. <laughs> this bomb site, we saw six Osa appearances in the Manchester Major, and two of them were wins. That's still a 33% win rate, which is not very good overall, especially on one of the more attacker-sided bomb sites in the game. This bomb site's typically got an attacker win rate. I actually don't know off the top of my head. It's above 50 for sure. It's around 60, I would bet. Um, but this is one of the, the weakest sites that we have on Oregon, and the Osa pushes weren't that successful. So I want to show you, as we often do, a very typical Osa push, and I think this was most commonly brought by PSG Talon. This is very old school as well. You probably know about it already, but just in case you don't, this time we've got Ryder playing the Osa shield. He's going to use his first... The, the first goal of the Osa is to clear out the max stage, currently being played by Hoven, and PSG Talon do a great job of that. They drone out the mute, and then from T3, Ryder actually himself swings on in and gets the kill onto Hoven. So, so far, an extremely successful push with the Osa. In fact, I do think they win this round. I can't remember. But regardless, he does that, and then he sets his shield up up here in Attic so that his teammates can cover the Attic hatch from up above. He then works his way down the staircase using the Osa shield to keep himself safe, which, as some shots go out his way, works successfully. He plays the main stairs until this exothermic charge can go off and they can open the wall. Which might have just gotten impacted. No, they're opening it now. There they go. And with that opening, the Osa now has her Q to start making the move to uh, get into a plant position. Notice the Osa again also bringing frag grenades, which are very effective on this site, dealing with the Kiba barriers, forcing players out of strong positions. There's the sandbags corner, uh, of course, on this site with the drone hole, which can be really effective. They do lose some bodies. The position Reaps is playing right here um, can be countered out by frag grenades. It can also be countered out by Capital, which is being brought currently by PSG Talon. And finally, it seems like Ryder is in position where he feels like he can push on in. He uses the shield to get down. And there's the Capital to, corner, to counter the Sandbags position. He could use the Osa shield to get into his plant position behind the table. He could also just leave the Osa shield up for his teammates in the post plant. I think in this round, I actually don't remember what happened in this round. They might still lose this round as well, but I think they win it. I believe it stays in his pocket for the rest of the round, and he just gets into a plant position and eventually finishes it off. Yeah, he pushes deep, gets the kill, his teammates frag as well, and gets the plant down with the Osa shield in his pocket. Really standard, traditional push with Osa, and it's good. It's good in theory, it's good in practice. There's nothing Bleed can do here, uh, or, you know, maybe there are some things. But they fail to do them, and uh, they can't stop the plant. The cover from above on Attic is still helpful. I don't think it was really contested too heavily, but despite Turd's skill as a player, he's not able to clutch the 1v3. The post plan is too tough. The Osa did its job perfectly, and they will eventually go through and win this round. Good finisher by Roy Boy. Now, the next clip I want to show you is the exact same push from PSG Talon. 
except this time they're playing against FaZe. And in particular, they're playing against FaZe a lot later in the tournament. So FaZe, the great team that they are, are expecting this specific OSA push, and they've brought a brilliant strategy to counter it. You see, FaZe Clan have brought in the Bandit. It's a 5v5, and they're using their Bandit to Bandit trick the Attic Wall. You'll see KDS work this Bandit trick top floor, and with this Attic Wall closed, that means the attackers can never get control of, um, of the Attic Hatch. They have the MPs, they toss down, but they have no answer to the Bandit trick. Successful from KDS. Again, this comes later in the tournament, so KDS fully expected this. They toss out more EMPs, but his bandit batteries are still there, and they can never get the wall open. And failing to get this wall open essentially means this push is just completely impossible. Because without this wall open, you can always get denied from up above. They expect the bandit to have a C4. Of course he does. It's not going to be a safe push, no matter what they try to do on that execute. So at this point, some OSA players would try to pivot, try to make something else happen. But there's just nothing that they can do to actually make this push um, successful for them. So what they end up doing, I think this is quite smart from PSG Talon. They give the defuse kit over to Roy Boy. They actually pivot their entire push. They now decide we're going to full clear top floor. Ryder himself says, I'm going to stay in attic. I'm just going to be the distraction. Not dissimilar to what Lagonis called for back on border. But PSG Talon have to completely change up their strategy. And one of the disadvantages we see with Osa, and you'll see this on some other bomb sites going forward as well, is when you're trying to actually adapt. When you're trying to go to a backup plan, a plan B, it's really tough. Because to make Osa pushes work, you often have to put all your eggs in one basket. You have to do everything in your power to focus on this one specific strategy. Osa obviously is not great in other situations, but often you're bringing Capitao or Smokes or Glass or whatever it may be alongside this push, which can be difficult sometimes to pivot to other pushing directions. Again, I think Talon do a pretty good job. This is maybe Ryder's biggest misplay. He tosses a nade at the kitchen window, and it kills Misa. It just kind of turns this whole round into chaos, and I think it kind of shows what can happen to a lot of teams when the Osa play doesn't go according to plan. So a good counter by FaZe, but it's also only possible due to the fact that they fully expected this Osa push um, before it came out. Our next clip is another counter of this same push, but it's a bit more uh, traditional. This time, the push is again going to be from Lagonis. Um, and instead of trying to go for a crazy bandit trick or anything, SSG just say, fuck it, we're going to play a little forward. We're going to play a little aggressive. And Jay and I know this is a masterclass round from him. Pay attention to the way he plays this round, his movement, his aim. It's all perfect. But I do think it kind of uh, exemplifies what to do with Nuzan Osa. Because when Osa is sitting up on this tower, she can't actually trade or cover her teammates. It's very hard for her to actually move out of this position, get a kill. And that meant that Ness gets completely caught off guard. He's got no teammates with him. Jane I know just pushes up and gets the kill. A little bit of aggression immediately throws this round off balance for Team Liquid. And just like with PSG Talon, that doesn't mean the push is entirely over. But Jane I know continues to play aggressive, continues to challenge this uh, Osa, and much like the way you would want to play against a Monty back in the day, not new Monty, mind you, but the way you'd play against a Monty traditionally, you can play against this Osa by not really respecting it, not expecting the Osa player to really be able to get kills on you and not moving out of important positions. We see Jay and I know able to completely abuse this push, gets one, two, three, and four kills to end out the round. A masterclass for sure, but just a little decision when it comes to positioning. You know, I think in most pushes, that's a pretty bad position. You can get nade out. You're in a really tough spot. But against the Osa, you're free to play that spot with a little bit more forgiveness. You know, there's less fewer, there's fewer players on the board that can actually punish that position because Lagonis is so often behind his Osa shield that he's isolating fights really well and able to get away with the 4k that round. I want to show you one more clip that can demonstrate the lack of adaptability. It demonstrates the lack of adaptability with Osa. And I think this is the only round that Cyclops brought Osa. Um, and it's pretty bad. 
So in this round, uh, Cyclops are bringing Osa to the to the meeting room bomb site, and for whatever reason, they're deciding they're, they're deciding they don't want to go for the traditional Osa push. They're deciding we want to clear top floor with Osa. Whether that's because they saw something they didn't like, I believe Breede is playing tower stairs, so maybe they think it's going to be too hard to clear him out of that position. They try to pivot with their strategy, and Osa just doesn't do things very good other than the one thing she's made to do. Shireep in this situation tries to play Osa as if it was a Monty, but Osa's not a Monty. And with the angle beside the shield, Saltov finds the kill and Shireep immediately goes down, making the Osa a complete waste of space. And I really think this is, and we'll talk about this when we talk about the buffs, one of the biggest downsides with Osa. If you could bring Osa and play her kind of like a Monty, I think she'd have more uses when you have to go to a backup plan or when you want to pivot. But she's just a shitty fucking Monty. She's so bad at doing what Monty wants to do. And for that reason, when you try to use Osa outside of the traditional plant or distraction type plays, she's very, very poor. Funny enough, Kag win this round. <laughs> 4v5, they actually do convert it. And this is the second round that Osa wins on this bomb site. It's quite long. They actually do a pretty good kitchen drop here. Um... Where Anaton kills Efac, they have good vertical pressure thanks to some of their. I don't know. They don't even use good breaching charges. Honestly, it's tough to say how BDS lose this round. This feels like a round they should not be winning, but sometimes in the late chaos of siege, shit just happens. Users can't uh, win the fight. It's honestly great play by Black Ray to get off there. Black Ray gets his second by getting off the plant. Saltov in the one v three actually loses this. Now, I would argue the Osa had zero impact in helping them win this uh, round, but nonetheless, it counts for the statistics, so I want to be honest. For Finally, we're going to move on to our fourth map, and although we're looking at five bomb sites today, we're looking at our final map, because there's one map where Osa shines more than any other. There's one map that is inarguably the home of Osa, where not just one random bombsite can be effective, but two random bombsites can be effective with Osa. It's not a map that we've talked about yet. It's the map that Chad is already calling out. We're talking about Bank. And many people, when you talk about Osa, specifically when I talk about Osa, because usually I'm shitting on Osa, will bring up Bank as the one map where she actually has some value. And although there's one bomb site that you're probably already thinking of, there was a second bomb site where Osa was brought more than two times, thus fitting our qualification of uh, looking at the bomb site. That's actually bank top floor. Uh, this is the least played map of the quote unquote big five, or least played bomb site of the big five that we're going to be looking at today. It was only played three times, as opposed to Border and Oregon and Clubhouse, which were all played more than three times. But unlike Border and Oregon and Clubhouse, it actually has a positive win rate. Two wins and one loss on bank top floor. It's the smallest sample size we're going to look at. But not only does it have a good win rate, it was played by three different teams. It also has what I think was the single best Osa push of the entire major. Chat, can anybody guess what player, in my opinion, had the single best Osa push? We've not looked at them so far of the entire major. Kane's guessing Envy Taylor. We're not looking at him for this bomb site. Iconic, a good guess as well, but not true. In fact, it's not because Iconic does not, doesn't even play on this bomb site or doesn't even play Osa. Of course, the answer is Fish O Guy. Let's watch the Fish O Guy masterclass of Osa. And it's not just the Osa in this round, everything goes well. This is a CEO window execute which Bliss do to perfection. They're down 6-2 to BDS in this game, but they swing in with Fish. He's in successfully. They've got Zofia with stunning from the windows. They've got Wettables popping off of smokes. They've got a player in the basement trying to take down those players who could potentially deny from below. Everything goes perfect for Bliss in this execute, and they win this round. It's not particularly close. The smoke stopped the uh, denial from Janitor. They had uh, a player down below to stop the vertical denial. I don't think it was a player below. Sorry, it was Oda on the wind who stopped the vertical denial. Sajin came in with the impacts of uh, Zofia. This was a perfect push from Osa. And I, I really think this push, it reminds me of the clubhouse push, where in theory, it's really, really good. But I think it's just easier to execute than the clubhouse push. It's simpler. It's a little bit more standard. It is maybe more susceptible to early round aggression by jumping out of windows in ways that clubhouse is not. 
But if you're ready for that, or if the defensive team doesn't go for that, I think this is a super solid push, and I don't really have anything bad to say about this style of push. Part of the reason why I don't have anything bad to say about this style of push is because no other team actually ran this push. Now, Osa was brought three times on this bomb site, but both other pushes didn't come in through the CEO windows like you might expect. They instead came through top square. And this is, I think, the other successful way to use Osa on this bomb site. We're going to watch it get played by Fear X, and it's actually Demic who rocks it in this round. And I, I just want to kind of point out this position. First and foremost, this is not a quote unquote Osa push. Yes, Osa is in this push, but the star of the show of this execute is Nova on the Blitz. Osa is not being brought with the Fuse Kit. Osa is not the main point of focus, much like that round from Lagonus on Border. Osa is simply here to do a side job, and you'll see this commonly on Bank. Osa is watching the flank from bottom square. You see Demic has a great uh, view of all bottom square, able to fight really long angles. And as I play this round, there's not a whole lot to say about the Osa. You know, fire some shots back, but at the end of the day, Nova's gonna sprint through this bomb site, get like two kills, I think, while his teammates gets more, uh, get even more kills, and it's really just a great blitz play. But I still think the Osa is providing value to this push in terms of flank watching and stopping anything aggressive from happening from the defense from down below. I think Demic actually does die in this push, if I'm not mistaken. So, like, technically the KD isn't really great for the Osa here. Yeah, he eventually abandons his shield and just tries to play behind the Blitz, as you kind of should here. But I don't think the Osa is detrimental here. I think it works with the rest of the push. You need a good Blitz player for sure, but Osa plays the Blitz really well here. End of the day, I think you could even adapt this to where maybe the Blitz makes the space, and then Osa goes for the plant regardless. And you could still have somebody maybe watching from bottom square or something, and the Osa push could still work really effectively, even if Osa was planting. But end of the day, it's a solid push. Nothing bad to say about it, and I was even wrong about the Osa dying. So top floor, all in all, is pretty good. I won't show you the last round on this bomb site, but it was a similar push top square. Uh, it was just less effective. I think it was run by E1, their blitz. I don't think they ran a blitz. They just kind of lost all their gunfights playing top square. But it didn't feel like a bad push in general. And I think both ways that you can use the Osa on this bomb site have proven to be effective. All right, let's talk about the best Osa bomb site in the game. Bank Basement. This was by far the most popular bomb site to see Osa on at the Major. And it also had by far the best win rate. Seven plays, five of which were wins. That is almost as many wins as the rest of the bomb sites combined. This is by far the best bomb site from Osa by the numbers. And just in case you wanted to see why, um, I've got for you a great clip of uh, an Osa garage push. And this one's from um, potentially former player of M80, Noodle. Noodle does everything right in this clip except for hit his shots. But we're going to forget the fact that he doesn't hit his shots, and we're going to watch the way he uses his utility. He sneaks up into Garage halfway through the round. He takes a gunfight, which he unfortunately loses, and he gets himself in a position. He then uses the nades on Osa to destroy the extremely common Garage cam, and he sets up his deployable shield. Notice his team is just running a default Monty server push. Very standard, very good push. Osa, again, not the star of the show. So Noodle sets up his Osa shield and is just watching for the cross. Actually making the defense really scared to play here. Because although they didn't lose the gunfight to Noodle, they know he's there. Opening the space for Kino to, to open things up. Allowing the space for Cameraman to come through and hit the back. And eventually late during the execute when he realizes the rest of the defenders aren't going to cross his sight line. He simply steps up and starts to take these gunfights himself. Now again... Does he win any of these gunfights? No. <laughs> Maybe mechanically he's not doing the best in this round. He's currently still back in the shield. He will push up eventually towards the end of this round. But again, he's doing his job well. He's covering from Garage. He's not the main point of focus for this execute. He's got Kino making space in the bomb site, obviously until he died. They had Cameraman hitting gold. They give Spoit the freedom to push forward here. And now it's kind of the second attempt with the execute. Notice, unlike on meeting on uh, Oregon, they can play a backup strategy. There's Sajin taking out Noodle. They can change the idea of this push, even though they have an Osa. They can try it again. They can go for a backup plan, even after the Monty dies. And the push is still successful. Technically, even though Noodle lost his gunfight, he bought enough time 
that the defense didn't have the opportunity to come up and stop this plant. And as you should know, this is one of the hardest bomb sites in the game to win a post plant on. So this is great. However, what happens if the defense are actually pressuring Garage? I mean, Noodle basically got it for free that round. Well, we can see what happens when Beast Coast run this. I think the key thing in this round is the teamwork. Diffuser is the Osa player pushing in through Garage. But he's also got, I think it's Dokabi. No, it's not. I think it's Spirits with him. Maybe it's Gunner. He's got a second player with him, okay? And although he can make that space, obviously safely able to walk up. I think it was Gavin. I don't fucking know. Somebody walks on up, destroys the bulletproof for him, and he gets right back into position. Now, timing is a little unfortunate. He can't kill the player reinforcing. But the second Kendra saw him, he had to back off. And Diffuser has gotten all this space completely for free. You might have also noticed there was a drone up here that was helping Diffuser get on through the uh, the garage as well. And so again, we've got um, really strong pressure coming in from Garage, Beast Coast, that's not the focus of their push. They don't have a Monty the same way that we saw um, M80 run this, but they're still dropping down gold. Their players have a little bit more freedom, and Osa's actually pushed very far up. Diffuser already at this point is in the bomb sites. Helping out the rest of his teammates, denying that angle, and crushing ITB in the site. Everything goes well for Diffuser and the rest of Beast Ghost in this execute. I think it's flawless. It's a flawless. So even if you don't get Garage for free, you can use your teamwork to help you out. Now, I think there is one danger of Osa on this bomb site. And that's the danger of stalling out. And we're going to see another round from Noodle on this bomb site. This time against, uh, this time against Team Bliss. Notice we're already down to 50 seconds. Because M80 aren't using teamwork to take control of the garage, they're taking control of garage a lot later than what we saw from Beast Coast. And it's really, really slow for Noodle to actually get in here. He needs to wait for Spoit to push all the way down Master, or Main, I should say, to get that kill. And now we see Noodle starting to push up through garage. Meanwhile, all the fights are going down. Noodle's really not having an impact for this round. And although Spoit is kind of fucking crazy, he's not able to kill every single player in the bomb site. Noodle eventually dies very late into that round. So if you can't actually get your shield set up in time, whether that's because you don't have the teamwork for it or it's because you're just too slow to get there, I think it can be a bit of an impactless operator and an impactless position, which in this round it kind of was. So ultimately, that's the big five bomb sites. And I think at the end of the day, we can say that Osa is definitely viable on two bomb sites. I think Osa is viable at on bank top and bottom floor. Bank is the home of Osa. I liked most of the Osa pushes on bank basement. I liked most of the Osa pushes on top floor. Every other bomb site is very questionable. Border on archives, way too many counters, super low success rate. Uh, clubhouse basement, similarly, so easy to make a mistake. Unlike Border Archives, I think conceptually, Clubhouse is a little bit more sensible. I think it does have more potential, but you've got to be perfect, and I don't think it's the easiest execute to pull off on that site. And then Oregon Meeting, one of those bomb sites where I think it does work, but it's very inflexible. It's hard to do anything else when you bring the OSA on that site. And I think because it's such a winnable bomb site, regardless, it's often not a site that you need to gamble on the OSA, right? You've got to gamble if there's not a bandit uh, trick going on in Attic. You've got to gamble someone like Jade I know isn't playing aggressive on you close to the wall. And so it's kind of tough. I also want to keep uh, an open mind about Nighthaven Basement. I'm not going to put it on as officially a viable bomb site for OSA, but it's a bomb site that Beast Coast ran twice, and they won it both times. Uh, and if you go watch those uh, those rounds, you know, I think Beast Coast played really well on it. But again, is it a good strat or is it just the Beast Coast are the best Nighthaven team in the world? We'll wait to see if other teams adapt that strategy from Beast Coast. And maybe at Gamers 8, we'll kind of get the answer to that question. So that's the first two questions asked and answered. And question two is obviously the big one of this uh, analysis stream. But there's another question. What are the counters of Osa? And I've kind of identified from watching those rounds three big main kind of play style counters. First and foremost, the obvious one, explosives. Impact grenades, C4s, toxic babes, goyo fire, tachanka fire, anything that traditionally denies a plant also denies an Osa plant, with the sole exception of shooting the planter. 
Osa doesn't counter any of the other ways where you can um, reliably stop a plant. So if you see an Osa in your ranked game, bring those impacts, bring the C4, make sure you're positioned in the right spot, because destroying that shield makes the Osa super scattered, super afraid, and really hard to find any success. The second thing to, uh, to counter Osa is aggression. Remember when Ashen just sprinted past the cover on top of uh, Kleppa's basement and shot Matumbo in the side? Osa fundamentally doesn't have her gun up most of the round. Whether she's planting behind the shield, whether she's just holding the shield, whether she's just sitting behind the shield, often it's very hard for her to actually take strong gunfights. Because even if she's behind the shield with her gun up, she can't position herself very well most often than not. It's hard for her to aggress and get a trade. So if you could just push up... Yeah, in theory, maybe you get countered, maybe you'll get caught, but if you don't have any impacts or C4s, this works surprisingly often. And if it can work at the pro level pretty often, it's going to work in your ranked game. Finally, and this is maybe less applicable for ranked, direct focused counters. Something like a, if you can be guaranteed that an Osa push is coming, strategies specifically designed to deny important parts of the map that osa needs are super critical and that again comes down to the lack of adaptation if you can do something that specifically shuts down the osa push the attackers are going for there's a very low chance they'll be able to pivot that push into another successful execute so ultimately i would say the primary things that counter osa are going to be plant denial aggression and strat specific counters so we next ask the question how do we buff osa Thinking of those three counters, how are we going to buff Osa? Now, I don't think there's... Um, I think two of these uh, two of these counters we can address with buffs. One of them I don't think we can. First of all, to address plant denials, I think buffing shields against impacts would go a long way. This is something Chad actually brought up to me a couple weeks ago, and I really like the idea. Imagine if the first time you tossed an impact grenade at an Osa shield, instead of actually destroying the shield, it just shattered it. Now, instead of being able to toss one uh, impact and the entire attacking push goes away, at least you have to use two impacts instead of just one. Oftentimes, roamers are using impacts somewhere around the map. You know, impacts that use for a large variety of things. It might also help uh, players and teams that can hide their OSA until a lot later in the round. So I think that's the first thing you can do to this. Obviously, C4s would still counter the shield. Toxic Babes and Goyos would still counter the shield to an extent. Um, but making it more resistance to impact grenades, I think, encourages smarter and more cautious play by the defense and also just kind of gives Osa a break that she desperately needs. The second thing I think Osa could do, I don't think we're going to do much to counter the aggressive uh, aggression. I think aggressive play is always going to be good to counter an Osa. But if something goes wrong on the Osa, it'd be nice to be able to have a backup plan. And I think by making the shield wider when you're actually holding it, we could accomplish that. If Osa just played a little bit more like old school Monty when she's holding the shield, I think all of a sudden she becomes an operator where if one thing goes wrong, the round is over, to an operator that can kind of adapt. I don't like shield player uh, shield operators any more than you do, but Osa's shield is basically useless when it comes to actually using it as a shield operator. And with Monty being way stronger than he used to be, Blitz being way stronger than he used to be, I think Osa running around with the shield isn't that scary. She's still got to crouch walk whenever she's moving to not get shot in the feet. It's not going to be as effective as Monty or Blitz, but it's at least a viable backup plan if, say, you can't get a wall open or you need to go for a different push than you were initially expecting. Making the shield wider while you're carrying it around would do a lot to just allow Osha to survive in situations other than specific plant-focused uh, executes. So I've written them down here. Impact resistance uh, to the nades or being wider when held, I think, are the two best ways that you could buff Osa immediately. Now we come down to the final question, and you could argue the sample size isn't the largest. You could argue that maybe nobody should be considered the best Osa because nobody plays Osa that often. But I still wanted to ask the question. Sorry to the UK fans in chat. Who is the best Osa player in the world? And I think there were a couple of options for this one. I want to give some honorable mentions. I think Ryder on PSG Talon often played the operator played the operator both often and well. I think that Ryder did a good job with a lot of the Osa plays, but I also remember Ryder nading his teammate and the chaos that sometimes happened when the Osa plays for Ryder didn't go according to plan. So I'm not going to give 
the number one spot to Ryder. I'm also not going to give the number one spot to Hot and Cold, who might be a weird pick because we didn't see much Hot and Cold clips here. But Hot and Cold actually brought Osa a lot through the Manchester Major. He just didn't really bring the operator on very traditional sites. So he was very creative with the Osa, but I mean, you saw the win rates um, with Osa throughout uh, the bomb sites, not in the top five. His win rate wasn't amazing with it, and because we didn't specifically analyze any of his rounds, I'm not going to put him in on, for this list. Because he's usually using Osa more as like a surprise pickup or something that the team specifically is stratting for. Instead, I'm going to give Osa uh, the number one Osa player in the world title to Lagonis. I think Lagonis was the best Osa player um, for a couple of different reasons. Number one, I think he was very good with his utility. Remember how he's putting down both of his claymores in this round, and he's not putting them directly under the radio window where he could get run out and untied. He's specifically putting them around the corner because it's a little bit safer. I don't think there's any player that used Osa's utility more deliberately and more cautiously than Lagonis did. He used it super, super well. I also think he just understood the weaknesses of the operator more than any other player that I saw. Being able to call on that one uh, Oregon push that, hey guys, this push isn't going to work. Let's change this up. Let's go uh, swing around the side. Let's use these shields of distraction was really, really effective. He still did have some blunders. Like, you know, his push on Oregon meeting wasn't very successful. I think his overall win rate was still like 33% or something on the operator. But nobody had an operator win rate above 50% if they played the operator more than once. So that's just the way that it is. I think I do want to give it to Lagonis because it felt like the rounds he lost, especially on Oregon meeting, weren't his fault. It was usually just his teammates losing gunfights. And I still think his Osa play in particular was really strong. And I'm a liquid hater. But you gotta give the credit to Lagotness when it is due. In conclusion, Osa still sucks. 